to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Please come, Minister Kayo. They just come for a moment. Let me just use you for an example. Watch this. This body you see, everybody look up and learn. This body you see is only an instrument of execution. This body does not have a will of its own. Anything you see the body do that translates to the result of your destiny is only obedient to your mindset. If I take my hand and I slap this man, the hand is innocent. It is the mindset that told the hand to slap. Are we together now? If I take a gun and I go to kill, the gun is innocent. The mindset instructed the body to hold the gun till it kills because it believes it cannot prosper by dignity. So your body is only a slave to your thinking. When a man slaps his wife and beats the wife, there is a mindset that teaches you that if you beat the living daylight out of your wife, she will respect you. Maybe it came from culture. So your body becomes a slave to that thinking. Now, let's assume, God forbid, but let's assume this man is an armed robber. Shoot this armed robber and let him fall to the ground. Let's also assume that there is another man standing here. Come, you sit back at your keyboard, eh? Watch this. Let's assume this man is a pastor. Shoot two of them when they fall down. Do you call this an armed robber dead body? Do you call this a pastor dead body? So who was really the pastor? And who was really the armed robber? Not the bodies. They are all called dead bodies. Now watch this. Let's assume this man is an armed robber. There is a mindset making him to steal, to kill, and to destroy. It, this man is a pastor. There is a mindset making him to preach the gospel and to love Jesus Christ. By the time this man gets saved, he can come here and the once armed robber suddenly changes. His body did not change. His face did not change. His voice did not change. The only thing that changed was his spirit and his mindset. So when you want to change men, what do you really change? So why have you been focusing on changing clothes and changing cars and changing jobs? It looks like the obvious problem but it is not the right one. You have changed every other thing except the real thing that needs change. Can I tell you, when everybody is wrong, it's proof that the problem is your lens of sight, your mindset. Is someone learning? So when the Holy Spirit comes and wants to build you, he will not give you capital for a business. You see some of those prayers we are praying, it's the mercy of God that is making that prayer not to be answered. Because God does not want you to waste money. God, if you can just give me five million in this Abuja, I promise you, you don't even need to come and help me again. You just give me five million and I will use the brain God gave. And you see, in God's mind, all you are saying is, Lord, mercy. I don't even know what I'm saying. I'm confused, but I need help. And he comes to you. He gives you a book and he gives you a message. Go and meet somebody who is struggling financially and give him a teaching and say, can you listen to this? He said, no, you are wasting my time. All I need is money. And you are telling him, I want to help you. I shared it last week. This man can remove this beautiful attire he's wearing. Not to insult, we pray that God transforms them. But you go to the outskirts of the city where you meet all these rough boys again you know what is rough about them right it is not the body always remember this body has always been obedient it is the mindset that told the body to smoke it is the mindset that told the body to sleep under a bridge it is the mindset that told the body to go and look for where there is something to smoke the body is innocent remove this same cloth and give those boys to wear in one week their mindset will tell on the cloth this cloth is clean 
it did not iron itself the body did not make it happen is the mindset that told the body to be sure that it's is neatly dressed so all of the confusion around our lives we blame our bodies we blame all of this it is our refusal to be transformed this is not just for your finance it's for your life we've dealt with the subject of mindsets we come from different cultures we come from different backgrounds we've gone through different levels of whatever it is again if this man has never experienced favor in his life let's assume that he came respectfully speaking from a polygamous family and he went through all kinds of things he failed he did 10 years to finish primary school eight years to finish secondary school another 10 years to finish university by the time he comes for koinonia and i say favor his mindset rejects that prayer because that has not been captured in his reality if i say diligence to work hard he will say amen because that's what he knows if i say favor he wants to say amen but his mind is saying what is favor it will scan the archive of your destiny and say there's no such thing as that so don't receive it are we together can i tell you if you are here to get a job thank god because you have the time to change quickly so that by the time that job comes is the renewed is the enlightened version of you that is admitted there most people complain and waste time and sit from morning till night blaming god blaming parents blaming wealthy people and blaming serious people for their conditions this is only the first law now this is where i have a problem with the imbalanced teaching that just give and your life will change it's not true you you are seeing it now right because there are many people who as they are putting their hands to give the realm of the spirit is ready to bring you the favor but the level of mental transformation that can take that favor and translate it to a blessing is not there so spiritual blessings keep coming in a bag that is full of holes listen to me it was not oil and a vessel that was equal to profit it was oil and plenty vessels when the prophet diagnosed her situation he said the problem is not the oil the oil will always assume the shape of the vessel carrying it if the vessel is small the oil will look small he said madam go and borrow vessel enlarge your capacity that anointing it is not your tithe that is not working it is not your giving that is not working it is the vessel through which the answer is coming even if rain falls from morning to night and it's only a cup you have outside if we are to use the rain based on the size of your cup we'll say it only drizzled whereas it was a, an avalanche it's just your cup that made it look like it is not raining are we blessed when i found this principle i began to rejoice i made up my mind that i won't fake anything brothers and sisters drink your gary with honor don't rush the season in your life now because you will miss it you will look for it and not find it again it will take a telescope to look back and say where am i coming from transformation that is lasting wealth that does not fail that's why you see wealthy people even when they lose money or lose whatever it is it doesn't really bother them because the moment they lose money their mindset kicks in and says it's a mistake you shouldn't be poor and the holy spirit will start working with that mind to find the way of bringing you back do you believe what i'm teaching you look up please if baba deboe walks into this place right now and says i am hungry look up how many of you say how is that my business there are restaurants there's one in jabi there's one in wuse is that how you respond some of you will say thank you jesus i have been praying for you will run leave this koinonia as it is now and run and go somewhere and make sure you get the meal and come and kneel down and say please eat it in my presence and bless me do you know why look at this because his level of transformation does not allow that condition to exist in his life can i tell you there is a level of transformation that if you get to it is only millionaires that have that kind of mindset and if you have that mindset and there is nothing in your hand the law of god's justice will force you to have the resources that match that mindset oh goodness my god help your people believe that i'm not just here wasting my time that means 
if you have the mindset of a millionaire now and you are in one room the law the power that backs this law will interpret it as a lie god will raise a destiny helper a business anything to shift you so what you do is not really the problem is who you are are we together can i be honest with you i want to say something now when i started ministry i used to go and preach and sometimes now I, I'm, I'm i have never preached for money it has never been about giving i love jesus with all my heart and for as long as i live he becomes my motivation are we together but when i started preaching i remember when i would go and minister somewhere and sometimes is when i climb my bike going back home they will now stand as if they are bribing me and bring out 2a and just count maybe 1000 or 500 as a man of god may the lord honor you thank you for coming for this meeting I never felt bad because it was only my body that was in that realm my mind was already years ahead of my body and I knew my mind would pick my body to a place where I'll be blessed I never told anybody I am growing the moment I focus on growing everything including the way they treated me as I traveled began to grow can I tell you this everything is waiting for you to grow to grow too now I'm going to demonstrate something that many of you have watched me do it can can i have a few people gentlemen sorry for inconveniencing you please come let's have like um i need at least six people one two three one two three four five six three of you stand here please facing one another no three stand here three stand here everybody watch and don't let the devil deceive you to believe you know what i'm saying just pay attention to what I'm saying because this is how the devil cheats people in church now watch this please go back guys this is what I want you to learn please if you can lift your right hand anything you can find whether you watch just lift anything up that represents your results watch this these are all the things that you want now he's lifting money now he's lifting all of this these are different dimensions in life watch this the way God programmed life is that you don't all these things they are lifting lifted guys are needed in your destiny but to start looking for them one by one is a burden God did not give you are you getting what I'm saying most of us when God tells you you need influence you need relationship you need a media ministry you need finances you need to travel abroad how do you start looking for these things one by one how old will you become before you get them let me show you how it works you don't look for money you never find it every realm and every level in your life has the possibilities attached to it to come if this is level one there is something that should come to level one if this is level two there is something that should come to level two you don't bring them by getting them you bring them by growing let me show you how the law works for every step I take come close to watch this I'm in one room poor and broke from a family where nobody has risen but I'm listening to Joshua Selman's message and he's preaching and I'm listening to it Lord I know that you are changing me watch this I don't even know that these things are coming closer to me because I can't see them I'm still in the one room let me show you how the law works God has called you to be an entrepreneur. He has called you to be a man of God. Now, I'm listening to Miles Munro's materials. I'm listening to all of these things. Oh, there is something called the law of honor. That honor is the key to access. I've grown. Watch this. Are you seeing that now? Everything you are looking for is also looking for you. But it is not looking for this version of you. Please go back, guys. Is someone learning now? There is a version of you that wants to get this. A version of you that wants to sit in business class. You sit with business class with only 100 naira in your pocket. You are not yet there. So you go back. You know you have entered a realm because everything around you grows to support that realm. You cannot buy a jeep 
and be looking for one gallon of fuel to foil it you are not there are you seeing now if it is by growth you get to a point where you can buy a jeep then other supporting areas would have grown to make foiling a car not an issue this is the mistake and the fallacy of a fake life you came to church sit down and learn watch this now because for some of you i'm showing you a graphic picture of what god is doing with you now you are seated in that house and you are saying lord will you ever lift me and then you keep learning and then you keep learning and then you keep learning one day somebody just calls you and says where are you is the law of time and chance happening remember the power of god is supervising that law you are a businessman someone now says can you help me sell one land um and you sell it and make three hundred thousand. it is small compared to the kingdom financier billionaire you are to be but it is a test it is only god showing you that this thing is working now you keep engaging these laws a time will come where even you cannot push them away the moment you are growing even if you try to push them they won't go you push money away it will not go because your growth has brought it to your life are you getting what i'm saying now now watch this by the time you stand this way everything has surrounded you the media interview you have always looked for you forgot about it and focused on growth the jeep that will not make people sleep now you have cars you don't even know what to do with it because they were designed to follow growth not just desire believers if you pay attention to what i'm saying you will look for me one day and say apostle thank you let's go back this is where you are my dear brother nobody knows you yet you are a man of god that god has said you will go to the nations there is temptation to live a fake life and get into premature manifestation and god says don't worry oh god but i am i am 30 years old and i don't have a car god says just focus on growing just focus on growing and while you are growing one day god will position your destiny help us in a conference and bring you there to preach and then because you have allowed yourself to be transformed by the time you preach you see this man holding money he will carry what will be somebody's one year salary and give to you just when you want to rejoice god says ah we are still in the school of the spirit this is not all you need this is just to encourage you that it is working let's go back to class now many people out of pride just stand and start bragging and says no can i be honest with you you can go back and everything also will go back this is the mystery behind balloon success now watch this i can use willpower and i can manipulate my way to hold this whereas i have not grown the laws of god's justice system will interpret this as a lie i will lose this thing no matter how careful i am life must take me back to the real place that befits my mindset can i be honest with you my dear people hear me this is where living a fake life if you eat tomorrow's bread today you will be hungry tomorrow if you wear tomorrow's cloth today if all you have is a trouser of 500 naira iron it with honor it is only your body wearing it your mind is already in a boutique shopping for your next level of life walking with the holy spirit we live in a world today where people are proud uh, they feel ashamed of process if you come and meet me in a one room with my bible and my candle and i'm praying and reading a book usually i'll be afraid and ashamed and so i will lie and tell my friend can you borrow me your house so that i will give a narrative that i'm making it no the bible did not leave us in the dark as to the fact that people can rise and can i tell you this let men laugh while you rise they will be the witnesses the day you rise they will be the ones who tell people no 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 minus this person we knew him we saw him when he started make up your mind that there is no living a fake life anywhere don't borrow any money to go and buy clothes and buy this and buy a car that debt is killing you your mindset is cooperating with satan to bring you back punishing yourself in cycles 
simply because you want to give a narrative that you're successful you can find rest god's way one last time let me act your journey right now for some of you you have gotten to level one some of you are already millionaires but that's not all god wants to do some of you are billionaires but that's not all god wants to do can i tell you this until you get to a point where you can give to the kingdom without inconvenience you are not yet there so as i kneel to pray as i come for koinonia every week let me tell you what is happening to you week one week two you don't look like it week three all that falling you are falling under the anointing you stand up and feel your wevon fell out. don't worry don't worry this is what is happening to you i know you are laughing but take seriously what i'm saying You are listening to the word of God. Others are sleeping. You are awake praying. You are studying materials. All because you want to build your mind. A day will come. You will see people's prayer requests coming to you. You didn't remember praying for them. But you fulfilled the Lord that brought them. They will come so close to you. You will drive them and they will not go away. A day will come, you say, God, these cars are enough. Just when you are saying it, a call will come and somebody will say, God told me. And God says, I can't stop. You are obeying the law. I must back it. Please do not think what you are hearing is some entertainment from a preacher. No. I fear God too much to come and waste your precious time here. Alagbara. You are the mighty God. Hey, Latobi Jew. You are the glorious God. Allah like Bara. You are the mighty God. Hey, Latobi Jew. You are the glorious God. Let's go back one last time, gentlemen. Watch this. This was what God told me many years ago son do not worry about these things focus on my principles that what you could not eat then you will eat it tomorrow the first crusade that we went to they were less than maybe about the size of our worship team here can you imagine praying and fasting for weeks as if you would die only to get to the crusade ground we were in debt. The same ladies who were in the welfare were in the worship team. They climbed trees to pluck firewood for us to cook before they went to sing. But it was only our bodies that were there. Powerful crusade. And I said, Lord, someday nations and kings will come. Transformation in partnership with the word of God will take us there. And today... To him be the glory and this is only one step out of the cave can i tell you this do not feel embarrassed by the inconveniences that you may see right now stop faking it stop roaming around getting angry and feeling this person should have helped me the fact that they cannot remember you means you are not walking by this law there is a level that when you get to your helpers must remember you so you see that it was only the body of joseph that was in that prison joseph knew i'm sure joseph was comforting them and they were saying joseph what is the basis of your confidence you are a prisoner like us he said no it is only my body that is with you when i get up i will make sure that i favor you and in one night no here is the fallacy of saying people just came out of nowhere no they rose to match where their minds have always been just because you did not see their training process does not mean they were not trained you might be a politician here please hear me you are starting as a local government chairman but your level of kingdom and mental transformation is the mindset of a senator a mindset of a president a mindset of an ambassador can i tell you the truth it will be impossible for you to remain in that position i don't care what party you are 
the force that backs this law is so powerful that no institution on earth sustains the power to stop an individual who fulfills this law this is true so the lord is telling you right now why is it that in spite of the fact that i'm getting money i'm not doing anything you are focused on getting not growing the first law i'm teaching you this night i can't believe we've spent so much time on just one law next time you rise and someone says you are just lucky tell the person please sit down i have a few things to tell you out of a heart of love and comfort it is not luck it is understanding are we blessed one last time never forget this teach your children teach everyone you know you are a ceo gather the people in your company and tell them stop complaining about the money you are receiving the money you are receiving is not all i am paying it is what your mindset instructed me to pay you the day you rise the instruction will change let this be your destiny in the name of jesus that by growth by growth everything that you are looking for today by growth when it comes by growth you are not afraid because everything will grow together are we blessed gentlemen god bless you i really appreciate you let's celebrate them let's give them a big has someone learned something today packaging without mental upgrade will only lead you to frustration you will give a narrative you will not have the transformation to defend are we together yes. you cannot claim you're a millionaire and then mama will ask you for ten thousand and you are talking stories you are not there simple by faith you are there in the spirit you are there but physically if you are not there be patient and work with the dignity of kingdom integrity focus more on becoming than doing you will do but let it come after you have become your physical environment will gradually and eventually reflect the true state of your mindset your physical environment will gradually and eventually reflect the true state of your mindset I don't have the time and I think I've taught it here how the mind is renewed you must have access to superior word-based ideas and information the first way to upgrade your mind is access to superior word-based information teachings like this that come to challenge status quo and to build you number two repetition of those ideas until conviction is established hearing once will not bring transformation you must hear again and again can i tell you there are teachings and materials i was sharing with the school of ministry student i stand before the god of heaven and i lie not there are materials i have listened to more than six thousand times one material the goal is not for information the goal is for transportation into my mind until it becomes true number two are we still here so the first law is the law of mental transformation the second law that commands wealth and abundance in this kingdom physical law is called the law of value please write it down the law of value your value is a measure of your skill your gift your abilities whether acquired or inherent your value is a measure please write it down your value is a measure of your skill your gift your ability whether acquired or inherent proverbs 18 and verse 16 your value is a measure of your usefulness to the marketplace usefulness not to destiny it is a measure of your usefulness to the marketplace the marketplace is a mystery 
it's not just talking about a market like your shop or mall or whatever it is a marketplace is a name given to the platform where demand and supply meet it's called a marketplace so your value is a representation of your usefulness to the marketplace write this down your value is also a measure of your ability to solve problems and provide solutions don't put a full stop just write please be patient you are learning something for your destiny your value is a measure of your ability to solve problems and provide solutions that are needed and useful please underline needed and underline useful within the context of a civilization let me take it again your value is a measure of your ability to solve problems and provide solutions that are needed and useful solutions that are needed and useful within the context of a civilization that means your value must be needed and useful to prosper you just because it is value does not mean you will prosper that value must be needed and it must be useful you have that down write this please your value decide who pursues you and who rewards you your value decides who pursues you and who rewards you this is very important because you want to live a rewarded life and now we are learning that in addition to your mental transformation your value a measure of your problem solving ability decides who pursues you and who rewards you we get paid and rewarded for bringing value to the marketplace we get paid and we get rewarded for bringing value to the marketplace africa wake up nigeria wake up these superstitious ideas we have about wealth to believe that all we need to do is just to drop seeds as important as it is and our lives will magically transform into transgenerational wealth those teachings may have come from well-meaning people but it is not accurate based on the authority of scripture and the wisdom we glean from those who have that result value we get paid and rewarded for bringing value to the marketplace write this down you must discover and develop problem solving skills and abilities if you want to prosper you must discover and develop problem solving skills and abilities if you want to prosper superstitiously hoping that you will become a millionaire that you will be blessed just like that may not get the job done you must discover and you must develop problem solving skills and abilities thank you jesus write this down please become a master at providing solutions and you will never be ignored Become a master at providing solutions and you will never be ignored. All of these sentiments that come using tribe, religion, gender, age, they only become issues when your value is not needed and useful and when you have not invested in yourself to discover and develop. The moment you discover and develop your value, under normal circumstances, you will veto the sentiments of gender, sentiments of religion, sentiments of whatever it is. Most people who are willing to pay you are desperate for results. They don't really care whether it's a male hand or a female hand that provides that result. The moment you are able to solve that problem, can I tell you this? Look up, please. If a billionaire's daughter is about to die, he does not care whether it is a Muslim's hand that operates her to heal her, whether it is a Christian's hand, whether it is a 30-year-old hand 
or a 60 year old hand let the hand just have the ability to make sure that person is healed and the rewards will come there are we together now someone who wants to design an estate and is ready to invest billions in it he does not care whether the person who does the architecture is a female is a male is a, a, a whatever it is is young or old the moment you have the competence and the value to be able to deliver that result this is why you find out that in places like europe and china you have young boys who some of them have not even gotten to teenage and yet they are doing all kinds of things around the world because rewards answer to value rewards don't answer necessarily to age rewards don't answer necessarily to gender they answer to value whoever is solving the problem is the one who will receive the rewards are you learning this is very powerful the law of value make up your mind that you will never be ignored in your world not by trying to look for a name for yourself be too valuable to be ignored There are 7.6 billion people across this world and growing but there are certain people around the globe who are called authorities across several areas and several sectors is that true there are associations literally that determine who will come to what dimension and what state because of the level of value that they have to provide no matter where you are around the world if you must attain that level of result it will not be by ignoring them may you become that kind of person oil is valuable to nigeria and africa and to the world go to the places where they mine oil in this nation and you watch the rigor and the activities that go on there when you see oil coming is a is a dark smelly paste that is slippery it's not something you should desire and yet nobody runs away from it because we have learned by experience that as dark and as smelly as it is it is what literally controls the wealth of nations are we blessed There is no market I know that does not have patronage. Whether the market is in the bush, whether the market is close to the road, once it is the market day, you will see everybody finding their way to go there. Value. There is something to be bought there and there is something to be sold there. Watch this. There are people who go to meet herbalists and occultists for power or position or whatever it is and do you know that people can get up from here and go anywhere around the world and even several places in this nation you can get to a place and a herbalist a rickety looking man who is sitting down in a smelly hut he will tell you turn back and you will turn back keep your jeep there and walk on barefoot look at all the sacrifices that you, a man can go through with joy why because there is an assurance at the back of that sacrifice that you will get some political position or maybe your company will receive some contract everybody say value it is my prayer for you that you will be so valuable that whilst you are sitting down many people's prayer requests will be looking for you in genesis chapter 41 let's hurry up in genesis chapter 41 We'll read from verse 14, then we'll jump to 33. This was the story of, jo of Joseph and Pharaoh. Remember, Joseph interpreted the dream in Egypt, and Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, the Bible says, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon, and he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh, 33. Having interpreted the dream, he now began to use his value to proffer an economic solution to save the day now therefore let pharaoh look out for a man discreet and wise it was a diplomatic way of saying pharaoh i dare you go around egypt and check if you will find somebody like me now let pharaoh look out for a man 
discreet and wise and set him over the land of Egypt next verse let's hurry up let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land and take up a fifth part of the land in the seven plenteous years uh-huh and let them gather all the food of those good years that come and lay up corn under the land of Pharaoh and let them heap food in the cities we're reading and that food shall be for store to the land against the seven years of famine which shall be in the land of Egypt that the land perish not through the famine and the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants as a result Pharaoh said unto his servants can we find such a one as this may that be your testimony that everywhere in your office in your place of work in your field of endeavor that they will look around not from a competitive standpoint but from a standpoint of value they can say can we find such a one as this a man in whom the spirit of god is what rewards that follow value and pharaoh said to joseph for as much as god has showed thee all this there is none so discreet and wise as thou art thou shalt be over my house and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled it says only in the throne will i be greater than thou and pharaoh said unto joseph see i have set thee over the land of egypt no interview no consultation no thinking about it no come back tomorrow the lifting power of value pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck next verse he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had and they cried before him bowed the knee to someone who 24 hours ago was a prisoner but valuable let me prophesy over someone here in the name of jesus christ for some of you before this week runs out on account of the value and the investment you have been making in yourself the pharaoh that will send for you the cyrus that will send for you i command that they must send for you and lift you in the name of jesus christ please sit down every blessed man is looking for valuable people nobody wants a liability and a nuisance in his place of work in his place of business stop bringing the issue of sentiments and say i have a brother somewhere he does not want to give me a job are you valuable there are many people who complain and say you are not giving us this contract will you do the job if given value is an enhancer of favor when you are valuable it is easy for favor to find expression in your life number three for sake of time we have to rush the third law physical law that is responsible for wealth and abundance is called the law of productivity the law of productivity productivity is the quality or ability to create make or enhance products and services productivity is the quality or ability to create make or enhance products and services the ability to create make or enhance products and services another definition productivity is the ability listen carefully this is my definition now the ability to refine and develop your value and then turn it into products and services that are needed and useful and then to serve it with excellence to a targeted consumer base i will take it again that productivity is the ability to refine and develop your value your value just like crude oil once it remains crude it is only potential it cannot bring you much you will need to refine it you will need to develop your value and then turn it into products and services that are needed and useful and then to serve it with excellence to a targeted consumer base hallelujah 
Are we learning? Please look up. If I use a fetcher and I look for any well around this environment and I fetch water, watch this now, and I use a white leather bag and I pour that water inside and I bring it to you as a dignitary, I said, this is my gift for you. Are you going to accept it? If I tell you to pay 100 naira, say for instance, for that, will you pay for it? But the same water that you are rejecting and getting angry and, and you feel insulted for being, for, for being served that water in a leather bag, someone will process that water. It's the same water from the same source sometimes and package it in a very beautiful bottle and now give it to you and sometimes in a hotel you can pay as much as 2,000 naira with joy what are you paying for? it is not the water you are also paying for the refinement are we together now? listen to me as powerful as value is your value may be sufficient for commendation but maybe not for reward you have to turn from value to productivity Many gifted people in this nation remain bankrupt because they are not productive. They are valuable. I can sing, but nobody will reward you because it is not yet refined. I can preach, but nobody will place a demand upon your grace because you've not packaged your value. I can cook. I can bake. I'm a good speaker. I have a very good argument for government. All of that is just stories, value, as important as it is. You must contend for productivity. Please shout it, say productivity. That means you must turn your value by development and refining into products and services that are needed and useful. Then you can serve them with excellence to a targeted consumer base. Are we together now? Yes. A great friend and brother Pastor Nathan Elbasi, one time he was sharing his story. How that not, not too many years before now, he was in this same country and would sing with a good voice, with grace, and yet not be rewarded and honored the way he's doing now. The difference was that he turned value or he moved past the step of value to productivity. Now you want to invite him, for instance, you must be willing to go through all of the logistics that you go through with joy. Why? Because you are not only bringing a man who is valuable, you are bringing a man who is productive. Could this be why people keep commending you? Ah, Madam, your food is so nice, and yet you are poor. The day you make up your mind to now turn that value right from your kitchen, now you begin to cook and find a way of packaging it and take it to somebody who has an influence over so many people and say this is just a seed for you to taste and the man says who did this he say you how long have you been doing this i've done this all my life okay i need 100 pieces of this by tomorrow you see that now god now positions your destiny helpers and in one month you are already cooking for kings it is only when you serve kings that you receive the reward of kings. Never stop developing yourself until you find out you are in the palace. The palace is where the gold is. The palace is where treasures are kept. If you are serving gatekeepers and serving people, thank God for that, but keep evolving. The day you see the king, you can know that you have found rest. You cannot receive the rewards of kings when you are outside the palace serve your way through excellence develop yourself whether you are in ministry some of you here are great men and women of god but you have not come to a point where you give yourself the frame that makes your value productive dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny.
Tete Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take a look at her. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline 